Hi, I'm Peter Travers, and this is Popcorn, where we tell you what's going on at the movies. And a major going on right now is Roman Polanski's thriller, The Ghost Rider, starring Ewan McGregor and Pierce Brosnan. Ewan and Pierce will be with us in just a moment, and they will tell us all about working with Roman Polanski and even raising their voice in song. But first, let's take a look at some of the suspenseful action in The Ghost Rider. Hi, darling. How is New York? Mm, short and sweet. Hi, Barry. Hi, Amelia. Hello. Who are you? I'm your ghost. Right. Don't worry. He isn't always such a jerk. Pierce Brosnan, Ewan McGregor, stars of Roman Polanski's The Ghost Writer. Oh. So I'm going to start with you since you're the ghost. Yeah. You're the ghost and yeah. you're the writer. And because I write, I always think in the beginning was the word. So yeah. who the hell is it that you're playing in this movie where you're only the ghost? Yes. You don't have a name. No, he doesn't have a name. He's just the ghost. He's, he, I came up with, for a few names, came up with a few names for him, but they were all silly ones like mm. Gordon they... McSporran or Gordon <laughs> McFarquhar, usually Gordon or something. But um, we don't know much about him. And I think that's, that's a clever device in a way. You know, Robert Harris, who wrote the book, The, the Ghost, as a writer himself, you know, the, the idea that the, we start with a ghostwriter in, in, in a place of slight failure, that he, he, Harris considers a man who is writing books on behalf of someone else and not putting his name to them, that there's a failure in, inherent in that job. You're practically one of us now. I am? You drafted the statement yesterday. That makes you an accomplice. Pierce, your character, mm. former prime minister, mm -hmm. in exile mm. on Cape Cod because in a very Tony Blair-like way, um, how much of Tony Blair's name came up when you were p discussing playing a man who's not called Tony Blair, I should say. He's Adam Lang. Mm -hmm. It came up on the first uh, meeting we had, Roman and I. We met in Paris. I helped on the train. I went to see him for lunch. And the first question was, you know, am I playing Tony Blair? And he said, no, 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 you're not playing Tony Blair. You know, however, though, all the, all the roads seem to lead to one man only, and that's Tony Blair. <laughs> And especially when five weeks later I was, uh, you know, I, I get a call from Roman. He said he wanted to do a photo shoot with me for the dust jacket of the book, Adam Lang's memoirs that's in the movie. And he sent me six photographs of Tony Blair, you know, facial expressions of Tony Blair, Tony Blair meeting with dignitaries. But I'm not playing Tony Blair. Blair. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on a minute. I should say I'm confident, not defensive, not to be fatal, but I shouldn't be cocky. No bitterness, no anger, and don't say I'm pleased at this opportunity to clear my name or any balls like that. So you're not defensive, but you're not cocky. You're not angry, but you're not pleased. That's it. Then what exactly are you? <laughs> Let me then go back to the beginning of this, where I bring up the, the sense that you do come together to do this movie, directed by Roman Polanski, who we all know is a fugitive from American justice. Mm. How does that fact affect you? It, it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. And it's a, it's a tricky one, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I really believe it doesn't. We're actors and we work with him as a, as a living legend of a filmmaker. And when you're sent a script by Roman Polanski, it's very, um, it's titillating. Your co-star Olivia Williams, I read an interview with her very where she was saying that uh, Mr. Polanski would often uh, say after a scene, no, 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 is that, uh, is that, uh, yeah. no, why would you play it like this? <laughs> that was another one of his popular notes. Ego boosting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point, Roman. Yeah. No, I would play it like that. Um, how would you like me to do it? No, no, we don't. We painted a bad picture of him, and it's not fair. He's he's just it sounded very, pretty very, fun to me. No, I he, he's just very precise about it, and he's not he's not rude or obnoxious. He's just very direct, and he doesn't sugarcoat his notes in any way. Well, is he generous about uh, saying that he likes a give and take that you do, or are you getting quiet and mysterious and having to figure that out for yourself? Every now and then he'll give you a line reading, but you know it was it was a big scene. 
I like and the idea of a line reading with a Polish accent for you not well, playing Tony that's Blair. That's the thing. Well, that, <laughs> that's it. I mean, you know, because no, the line reading is. he gave me on that day was give my friend a Calvados. I say, come in, sit down. I say, give my friend a Calvados. But, you know, you, Romans going, no, 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 please. Give my friend a Calvados. Give my friend a Calvados. <laughs> give my friend a Calvados. <laughs> All right, Roman. I'll try. Ah, it's going to be tricky being British, being Blair. <laughs> Not being, being Polish. Blair, yeah. being Polish. <laughs> Irish actor. Don't give me too much now. Let's just keep it simple. Because it's really good when you're behind you. That works really well. Because you are here lying and stuff, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're plotting. Yeah, here, you know? yeah, yeah, so it's better yeah. to be behind you. This man has a life that goes well, way beyond the, the trial that yeah. never happened yeah. about mm -hmm. uh, unlawful sex with a minor. This is parents' uh, Holocaust. Mm. Um, the murder of his wife, Sharon. I mean, everywhere you look, there's that. So do you, or does he go out of his way not to discuss this? He just doesn't talk, he doesn't, it's not something that crops up on set. He talks about, if, if something's relevant, he talks about, there's an interrogation scene, but not very small, a scene with me at the end with two policemen where they're questioning me. And at that point he made, because the, the actors who were playing the policemen were being very kind of, American TV show about it, you know, they were being really, one was playing a book, they decided who was the good cop and who was the bad cop, you know, and Polanski watched the first rehearsal and he was like, no, 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 they're very, he said, they're very nice to you, these people. He said, I have some experience with this and they're very nice to you, they're very, they're very nice people, these policemen. So he made a reference at that point to something he knew about, which was being interrogated or questioned by the police, but I think they, he didn't take it lightly, I don't think, he's not humorous about it in any way. Mr. Lang, Mr. Lang, where do you live in America? Oh, okay, good, good, good. Mr. Lang! Somebody asked me at the office today uh, what they should see, and I said that, and they said, well, uh, what is it? And I said, well, you know, it's, it's literate. Um, I said, it's smart. Uh, and I saw I had lost them. So I should say that it's also, <laughs> you said it's also and smart, very, they were gone. They were gone. <laughs> so I said, it's very suspenseful. Yeah. It yeah. is. So yeah. how would you two describe the movie that you made? What is it? Smart, literate. Illiterate. No, you won't say, <laughs> you won't say that. It's an edgy, no. edgy a seat. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. The poster. Smart, Smart, literate. literate. <laughs> Whoa, oh, no, we don't want any. Yeah. It's Polanski at his best. I mean, a man yeah. who's, who's made thrillers, the, some of the finest thrillers mm -hmm. in cinema, but he's never made a political thriller. So, you know, he, he's, he comes out with all guns blazing.